Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to the 54th episode of the Sira Stories from the life of our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. In the last episode, we studied an important incident that occurred after the expedition of Banu al-Mustaliq and the revelation of Surah al-Munafiqun. Today, we will study the third and the last incident that arose from this expedition. The long and the most traumatic story of the slander of Aisha, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be pleased with her. That slander attacked the extremely personal bond of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam with his wife. It deals with the honor and sacredness of marriage. And it shows us how low the munafiqoon went that you simply cannot go lower than this. And one of the most interesting things about this story is that it had been preserved in vivid details described by Aisha radiallahu anha herself and mentioned in the books of Sahih al-Bukhari and Muslim. Therefore, it's even more beneficial because we see it in the perspective of the actual person under attack. This was an important event in Islamic history that also led to the revelation of the important verses in Surah An-Nur in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala defended her. After the death of Khadija radiallahu anha, the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had a very soft spot in his heart for his wife Aisha. He loved her a lot. Although she was young, but she was very wise. She was also well known for her inquisitive memory and knowledge. So let's move on to find out about the slander, about how it all started. After the expedition of the tribe of Banu al-Mustaliq, the Messenger wasallam, and the army were returning and on the way they encamped outside of Medina. It was night time and Aisha radiallahu anha was in her carriage. She left the carriage to relieve herself at a distance. As she returned, she realized that her necklace was missing. This necklace was very special to her as it was a gift to her from the Prophet ﷺ. So she went back to look around for her missing necklace but could not find it. The city of Medina was just a day away from the place where they had camped. Everyone was very tired and they wanted to reach Medina as soon as possible. So the Prophet ﷺ ordered them to move. At this, they picked up the carriage of Aisha radiallahu anha and left for Medina. Now Aisha was young and light in weight, so the people didn't realize that she wasn't inside her carriage. By this time, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had already revealed the verses of hijab and everyone was very cautious about it. The hijab of the Prophet wasallam's wives was extra as they had to be the role model for the future generations. So they had to be covered not just in their body but their space as well. So the men who were in charge of carrying her carriage did not notice her absence as they did not look inside the carriage to see if she was inside or not. By the time Aisha returned to the camp, the caravan had moved on and she was all alone. But she found her necklace, which had been beneath one of the camels. Aisha decided that the best thing to do now was to wait for the caravan to come back once they realized she was missing. While sitting in wait under a tree, she dozed off to sleep. A soldier named Safan ibn al-Muattal had been sleeping in a different part of the camp when the army had marched on. And he was trying to catch up. As he rode his mount towards Medina, he came across Aisha. She woke up when heard a man saying, La hawla wa la quwata illa billah. She quickly covered herself with her veil. Out of modesty, Safan did not engage in conversation with Aisha radiallahu anha. All he did was that he lowered the camel walked away and then he guided the camel with his hands all the way back to Medina. Subhanallah, this was a true companion of the Prophet sallallahu He turned his back so he didn't even see Aisha. 
get on the camel and then went forward. Seeing Aisha radiallahu anha arrived with Safwan, some of the hypocrites stooped to such a low level as to spread an unthinkable rumor attaching the honor of Aisha and Safwan. Abdullah ibn Ubay saw this opportunity to get revenge and get even with Aisha's story. It was a truly evil and filthy act. Safwan ibn Muattal radiallahu an was a very noble companion. He wasn't even married yet. He got married after this event and he died as a martyr later at the time when Umar radiallahu an was a khalifa. When they returned to Medina, Aisha fell ill with a fever for several weeks. Meanwhile, she was unaware of all those rumors. The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was visiting her as usual but rather not showing his usual tenderness and affection. Aisha felt something was a little bit off but had no clue of the evil that was spreading. This shows us the innocence of Aisha and that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was just a human being and he was disturbed by the rumors but he did not want to confront Aisha with it. And deep down inside his heart, he had a feeling that Aisha radiallahu anha was free of the rumors. He wanted to defend her, but still he wasn't showing her the usual tenderness he used to. One night, Aisha ventured out with her aunt, and her aunt told her about the rumors against her. She was very agitated, and with Prophet ﷺ's permission, she went to her parents' house. She went on crying and praying to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to prove her innocence. One can imagine how Aisha's parents, Abu Bakr and Umm Rumman, would be upset on knowing about the plight of their daughter. While some people stood by Aisha and believed in her innocence, many others took part in gossiping and spreading false rumors. And there was nothing her parents could do to spare their daughter this pain. Other than the hypocrite Abdullah ibn Ubay, who had invented the lie and the rumors, there were other people around who were guilty of the gossip of conversing and spreading the news. This was wrong. We know that in Islam, one cannot gossip in this way, especially when it involves the honor of a person. The Prophet wasallam was contemplating what to do. So he called two of his very close companions, Ali and Usama, to find out if they had seen anything strange in regards to the rumor. As for Usama, he testified that it was not possible for something like that to happen in the Prophet wasallam's family and that they were free of this charge. As for Ali, he suggested that the Prophet wasallam call Aisha's maidservant, Barira who would know more about her. Barira was a freed slave of Aisha radiallahu anha, but she became a maidservant to her and was living with her. When she was asked by the Prophet wasallam about the rumors being true, Barira swore by Allah that she had never seen anything about Aisha radiallahu anha that would make her feel that the rumors about her were true. Subhanallah. The Prophet wasallam also asked one of his wives, Zainab bin Jahash, about Aisha. Even though Aisha and Zainab were not friendly and had a lot of rivalry between them. But Zainab, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be pleased with her, was noble and honest. She said, I will not cause my eyes and ears to fall into sin. Wallahi, I only know the good of Aisha. Hence, Zainab radiallahu anha also praised Aisha. With this, we come to the end of today's episode. Join me again to find out what happens next. Please don't forget to press the like button and subscribe to our channel, Zil Noreen. Until next time, Jazakallahu Khair and Assalamu Alaikum. Uh-huh.